unstable ferocity. Will is weakening. The brain is almost defeated.
Subdued. At last. This is its death rattle. Spare me. Join me. Wield me. Become absolute! This is it, soldier. This is what we fought for. Time to end this thing. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought. And it's taking all of Karlak's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. No more tadpoles, brain. It's time to die. My master. I must obey. I must end. Nightmares and the screams of legions upon legions of unborn elithids. The pain rips through you, obliterating all thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain. Silence. For the first time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity.
Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this. We did it. We actually did it. And the city's still standing. My powers, they're draining. Just like Mazora said they would. A small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. We really did it. The parasite, it's withered, dead along with the nether brain. I am cleansed. I will never be a filthy geish. Only mild offense intended, of course. You did the unthinkable, and I'm grateful for it. It's all right. I knew what I was doing. I will ensure that all Githyanki know your name and your sacrifice. What you have done today will start a fire that rages across the astral plane. With their lost prince returned, my people will burn away Vlakith's corruption. And it is all thanks to you, the Illithid who defied a nether brain. I did, didn't I? I saved the fucking world. And I think I might live long enough to tell the tale, too. I thank you, my liberator, my savior. My people are leaving, and I must leave with them. Come, Lazel. We will free the Githyanki and dismantle the Empire. Let them be imprisoned no longer. Mother Gith battled for liberty. But it was only here, with you, that I learned what it meant to be free. Orpheus, I'll remain here. My destiny is for neither you nor Vlakith to set. It is mine alone. I will not say I'm pleased with your choice, but I will wish you good fortunes. Whatever may come, you are still to lock more gear, sister in freedom. Julius! Farewell, Jestil. My liberator. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city. Smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. The power of Carsus would be in my hands. But what then? 
What would I do with it once I have it? And what kind of god would I be? No kind the world will suffer for the absence of. And, I hope, there are plenty on mortal soil who would regret my absence. If this adventure has taught me anything, is that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. Besides, I'm growing quite fond of this merry band of ours, but I'd quite like to see what happens to it. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. I'm not sure about, um, <laughs> drink in hand, but I think we've all earned some reckless abandon. How about you? Any thoughts on what's next? There is much to do. But a drink might be nice. A seat would be better. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! What the... Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, it was... It was nice when it lasted. Ah! I, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I doubt we'll ever see that face basking in the sun again. It's over, and it's all because of you. You, who were destined to become a thrall. Thanks to you, there will be no illithid empire, no death god's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. abandoned my prince for you and for a path of our making away from the astral and yet I breathe all the more free little is lost so much is gained last night will be forever branded into my memory but now I must think of future days I am forever marked by Vlakith the Undying Queen's knights will chase me across Faerun till I draw my final breath. Our lives will be colored by blood red and death black. Are you ready for the battles to come? Yes. A bond so tight, Vlakith would unleash the Astral Sea's fury if she ever tried to break it. When the red dragons come, we will shake the skies with their screams. The ground will be soaked and spoiled wherever the Kithraki fall. We will not be their prey. They will be ours. Hells, talk of battle set my heart beating all over again. Back to bed. I have more tricks to show you.
For six months, Lazelle has been learning the ways of Faerun by your side, as you traveled together far and wide. A letter, written in a frail hand, interrupted your adventures. An invitation to a gathering of former allies, those who stood with you against the Netherbrain six months ago. The location is familiar, and though the road is hard and long, you would not miss this for the world. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. as nice as the sitting room, but sure. I didn't realize you were such a homebody, Tara. <laughs> you see, Boo? I told you our friend was near. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. Find work as a jester if you stumble upon a noble with more gold than taste. Well, come here, will you? It's been forever. Hmm. You feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. I suppose I do, don't I? I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. I had no doubt. I'm glad to hear you say it all the same. I found a little cottage. Abandoned, half ruined. There's a lot of such places to be found thanks to the Absolute's armies. I've been making it my own.
It's harder work than I'd expected, actually. I'll never take vegetables for granted after all the effort it's taken to grow a few, but... Still. It's mine. Well, mine and the lodgers. Four dogs, eight cats, nine chickens, six pigeons, four sheep, a milk cow named Daphne, a squirrel who's far too clever for her own good, and a wolf cub I found orphaned in some woods. I've had to do far worse things with my hands. Trust me. This is no burden at all. I don't think I've ever slept more soundly than I have with my menagerie of beasts for company. Just don't tell House in that, or he'll want an invitation. Healing. Learning to live again. It's hard to think of all that was robbed from them, but they're intent on making every day count for double. My mother's mind still drifts every now and again, but she has more good days than not so good days. She taught me her recipe for apple and plum pie, and when I tasted it, I actually remembered it from when I was a little girl. Some things can't be taken from you, it seems. Father's making himself useful, helping me fix up the cottage and caring for the animals. You should see the amount I have now. He's been waiting years for this. Now he can't stop smiling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. Family life and pastry recipes probably aren't the most interesting topics for such a historic reunion. I couldn't have said it better myself. Just be sure to take your own advice whenever you can. You've earned it. Must I? You presume a great deal. I'm joking. Of course I want to know. Tell me all. As am I. It's well deserved. And I dare anyone to argue otherwise. Hopefully, these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. Don't remind me. Someone's always got somewhere else to be. Let's do our best, all the same. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. Oh, before you go, how does a red dragon plan their day? They don't. They just wing it. <laughs> Sorry. My father's got years of terrible jokes stocked up that he never got to tell me when I was younger, but... Lucky for him, I've never heard them. And seemingly, I am easily amused. I know. I would have been an open book to you in no time. But don't pretend you didn't like the mystery. Go on. You've got mingling to do. I'll work on my punchlines some more. There's something strange in your old friend's mouth. What is it? A familiar invitation. He wants you to throw the object he's dropped. But it isn't a ball. It's the astral prism. Scratch barks merrily in something like agreement. He whines. Less talk, more throw.
My dear friend, it's been an age, has it not? You're looking very well indeed. Our skeletal friend will be very pleased to see I found my way here, despite my invitation getting lost in the post. Oh, I wouldn't bother you with such things during a party. And anyway, I've gotten quite good at replicating your signature, so you needn't even bother with the release form. You might help me with the title, though. I'm considering the hero and me. What do you think? Oh, that would be telling, wouldn't it? But believe you me, my friend, not a word could have been written without you. Perhaps, once the manuscript is finished, you'd even be willing to write a foreword? Or better yet, I'll write a draft and you can just sign your name. Better still, I'll sign it for you, hmm? Ah, your success really has been wonderful for my reputation. But you mustn't let me hog your attention all night, my friend. You've many friends to chat to, and I'd love to listen in. Grander than any of the Patriarch's dreary thank you. Well, well, look what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gail Decarius of Blackstaff Academy, educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. A pleasure to remake your acquaintance. She did not. I'm delighted to report. I surrendered the crown of Carsus to her, as I told you I would. And in return, she cured me of the orb at last. Even now, I struggle to put the feelings into words. It was like... exhaling for the first time after holding my breath for so very long. Of course, I haven't clarified with my students that the orb is no longer a threat. The legend of my explosive capabilities is an excellent means of controlling a classroom. Too good, if anything. I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. I confess, Sometimes while marking a student's fifth attempt at explaining the principles of illusory materialization, the thought occurs to me. In fact, I've actually been considering writing down the story of our adventures. The true tale of our flawed but ultimately endearing troop and the trials and tribulations we overcame. I can hardly leave it to the likes of Volo to give a true account of our adventures. And no one would believe him if he did. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? And I couldn't be happier for you. A fitting reward for the sacrifices you made in getting here. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'd be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. I don't see why not. Two heads are better than one. 
Unless you're dealing with an Etin. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months. But I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, in the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now. The time enough to come. Well, look who decided to turn up. I wasn't sure our withered old friend could live up to his promise. But here we are. And you're looking more delicious than ever, if you don't mind me saying. Whatever you've been doing with your time, it clearly worked wonders. Love is a powerful tonic. And where better to celebrate our good fortune? An old haunt with old friends. Cheeky. I've been very well behaved. Thank you. I've taken a turn as an adventurer and hero. <laughs> it turns out no one actually cares about murder, as long as you murder the right people. And apparently I'm rather good at it. Yes, but you say all sorts of things. Honestly, I don't even listen half the time. It has made for a nice change, though. Inspiring hope in people, instead of terror. Well, I do try to inspire a little terror. I'm still me, after all. <laughs> Hardly. Good people don't spend as much time lurking in the dark as I do. You know, it's funny. At first, I thought I was trapped by the shadows, cursed to live in them forever. But in time, I realized that darkness is as much a part of me as my fangs. This is only a curse as long as I refuse to embrace the shadows. So, I decided I would. I decided not to be defined by the choices other people made, by what other people did to me. My past may be done. But my present, my future, they're mine. This is who I am, in all my glory, for better and for worse. That being said, I haven't completely given up on returning to the sun. If the opportunity presented itself, well, I wouldn't say no. But until then, I am happy. We've had quite the journey, you and I. From the moment I first threatened you, I knew you were someone special. Someone to take on the world with. I will miss our time together. But then again, maybe this isn't goodbye. So much as it's, um... See you later, darling. Thanks be to with us. Even a duke deserves a night off. After everything, this feels nice. A chance to take a breath, uh, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You've helped Mr. Dakarios save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? That doesn't sound like him. But whichever way you want to remember it, well done, I suppose. You ought to come visit myself and Gale when you're able. If you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta. 
darling. Well, now. You can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. <laughs> oh, how nice to be understood again. I have spent the past months bickering with builders and bankers, all to restore the city exactly as it was. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers. Same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. Baldorian simply get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. Two Organized the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. <sighs> they might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Ah, there is still much to do. People to house, a harper network to rebuild. I may have little love for this city. But so long as my family chooses to serve it, I can do no less. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Ah, oh, sentiment. With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now our paths cross once more. We have all pined for each other's company, I sense. I cannot imagine otherwise, after what we shared. That bond was forged in a crucible that can never be stoked again, Oak Father willing. It is a bond that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. Hmm. That was more than worth the wait. That was more than worth the wait? Oh, I suppose you didn't mean that literally. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. 
the old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes. And the land is rich with harvests and bountiful trees. Nature and civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. It is, truly. Though a more complex, evolving beast than I could ever have anticipated. I spoke often of balance before. Only now do I realize the balance is no simple, fixed thing. We welcome folk from all walks of life. Anyone who wishes for a new start. Naturally, it can be chaotic at times, but it is a thrilling sort of chaos. It thrives in ways I could never have dreamed of. You are welcome whenever you like, and for however long you please. Now, please, tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie, I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see, my charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin, another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. Asked to be tucked in next, but whatever the intrepid adventurer needed, I would have been glad to provide.
More than a few, I should think. At least I shall be equipped to explain the birds and the bees when the time comes. But I hope that time is quite a while off yet. I am all ears. Though I never cared for that phrase. A rather... unsettling image. <laughs> you have kept yourself busy. I expected no less in truth. I shall be able to keep the children enthralled for a few more nights yet, thanks to you. And should you wish to retell of your exploits in person, well, I shall not object to a night off. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening, as much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now, unless there was anything else. Before you go, I have something for you. Just a little keepsake, really. Do you remember how I told you I like to whittle? I made this. <laughs> Ducks are my favorite, but I thought they were particularly fitting in this case. They are migratory birds, of course, traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Yet, they always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. Just a token to remember me by. <laughs> now, I've taken up enough of your time. Go on. Enjoy the festivities. We can speak again later. I didn't realize you were such a homebody, Tom.